Welcome to Network Address Translation Lab. This is Ashokan. I'm going to demonstrate as to what are the various issues and various types of NAT available in Checkpoint Firewall. Let us go to this diagram where you look at this diagram. The corporate office is here and a firewall which is 10.1 internet face. 20.1 is the public IP which is connected to the ISP and 30.10 is the internet. Now, when the server is there outside and when the client is there inside, we enable something known as hide mode NAT. And we will discuss this again, but for the time being, let us understand when the server is out and the client is inside, we enable hide mode NAT here. And when the server is inside and the client is outside, we enable static NAT here. There is one more NAT known as manual NATing. Static NAT, hide mode NAT, otherwise known as dynamic NAT and the other one is manual NATing. We will see all these. Now, see what happens when the packet, this is before translation, this is after translation, this is the firewall and this particular area can be simulated here. That means this is a local network. Local network source IP, source port number, destination IP and destination port number. These are the header details of a packet which is coming to the firewall. At the firewall, network address translation is taking place and what are the changes happening after that is we are going to mention here. For example, I say the source IP is 10.0.0.10 and source port number is say uh, 1050. Any port number within the uh, limit of 65,535. The source machine is uh, uh, taking randomly. So let us assume that this is 1050. The destination IP, that means the 10.10 is talking to 30.10 for HTTP service. Then we can say it is TCP 80. And the destination source, destination IP is, sorry, destination IP is 30.10. 10, destination port number is TCP 80. So this will be the packet parameters from the before the translation and the network address translation takes place. And what happened, the firewall when the network address translation takes place, the 20.1 will be the source IP. It appends, it removes the source IP 10.10 10 and append 20.1 so that the packet when it goes here, it can replay to the firewall. The source IP will become after translation will become 20.0.0.1 that means this particular IP the firewall will append this IP as a source IP after translation of the packet and the destination IP is the same 30.0.0.10 source port number we will leave right now and destination port number is 80. I remove I left this uh, source port number because there is something we need to discuss. Anyway I <coughs> the replay packet will come from 30.10. After the translation, when it 20.1 receives, the 30.10 receives a packet whose source IP is 20.1, it has to replay to 20.1. So, when the replay comes from 30.10, the replay packet to IP, source IP will be 30.0.0.10 and destination IP will be 20.0.0.1 and and sp source port number is 80 and destination port number we will leave it. Now, I put a tab here. What happen if at all there is one more connection? Say for example there is 10.10. .10. Similarly there is another machine 10.20 machine 10.0.0.20. That particular system also wanted to access the same server and uh, same server by say 30.20. 30.0.0.10 at port number 80. What happened? This system also has picked up 1050 port number. This system also has picked up 1050 port number. Suppose if this happens, the network address translation happens here. This is 10.10 .10 system. This is 10.20 system. 10.10 is accessing 30.10 and 10.20 is also accessing 30.10. And after the translation, this packet will look like 
because the source IP will be removed with 20.1, 20.0.0.1, the firewall's outboard interface and it goes to 30.0.0.10 and source port number I leave it and it's a destination port number 80. When the replay comes, the replay will look like 30.0.0.10 is the source IP, 20.0.0.1 is the destination IP and the source port number is 80.